But I want you to go to Galatians chapter number 5. I love the book of Galatians. It's a wonderful book. Paul uh, was exhorting them because they had been invaded by Judaizers who, who were trying to turn them from faith in Christ back to the law or back to a mixture of law and grace. But I say to you that salvation is totally by grace. And I want you to look at uh, another question tonight. Uh, Chad mentioned one to me in the room, and I, had, I haven't got it built yet, but it's on the list. And uh, I have about five more already built. I didn't realize how exhaustive this, this, this thought is. But I want you to go to Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 7. And just one verse, and then we'll deal with this passage plus this text plus maybe a couple other verses that deal with this. Here's what Paul said to those at Galatia. Ye did run well. That's what he said. He commended them. Ye did run well. Then he said, who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? That's the question tonight. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Our Father asked you to help me to preach tonight with power, with purpose, with precision. I, I just want to... Uh, help our folks to keep going forward. There is a finish line. It's good that we started, but it's a must that we finish. And I'll praise you and honor you in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. I know many of you probably saw, maybe I always ask, the movie Chariots of Fire. How many? Few of you, few of you saw that movie. If you, you watched that movie, you know it, the character in the movie was Eric L Liddell. Uh, he was a, he's a great athlete, a great runner. His specialty was the 100-meter dash. That was his specialty. In the 1924 Olympics, he was a shoe-in to win the 100-meter dash. But here's the problem. When the scheduling came, hear me out. When the scheduling came for the, the 100 meter, it fell on a Sunday. And he was so committed to his faith, he said, I will not run this race on a Sunday. That's fact. He was, he was criticized. He, he was running for Scotland. Uh, they had very few, few medals, and this was their one chance. He was criticized. He was called unpatriotic. One of the, one of these, the uh, college, Edmund Barrow College, uh, wrote a paper about him or an article about him, and commended him for taking the stand for the faith. And he didn't run the race. Yet he entered into the 400 meter race, which was not his specialty, which he, uh, uh, it's just not something he run often, but he ran it, but he never won it. But somebody the day, before, the day of the race came and slipped him a note. And the note said this, they that honor me, I'll honor them. He ran the 400 meter race. He won the race, but not only did he win the race, he broke a world record. And I say about him, he did run well. And then 
man, he was called to the mission field in China. And I don't know if you study his story, but he was a missionary to China. And when the Japanese invaded China, they took him captive. He was captive for seven years. He finally died in that Chinese prison, February 21st, 1945. And the marker over him was he did run well. Tonight, Paul, and if you're a student of the Bible, know that Paul uses through several different books in the Bible, this picture of running the race. Amen? So I want to give you three thoughts tonight, and we'll, we'll move on home in a moment. But I want to talk about who did hinder you. There's a lot of people start for God, but they don't finish for God. They become casualties. They become castaways. I've pastored people over the years. We got a great crowd here tonight. We had a great crowd this morning. But I want you to know something. I've pastored a bunch of people that don't even darken the door of church tonight. They came to church. They ran well for a while. But now they're out. And some of them same people are critics. Arrogant. And always playing the victim and blaming somebody else. But the, the problem was, and the problem is, they let something hinder them from finishing the race. Look at verse number seven. And I'll, I'll just give you these three words and give you three points from them, and then we'll be done. Ye, I like that word. It starts out in verse seven, ye. First of all, I want to say to you that this race that we're running is a personal race. It's a personal race. It's for every believer Amen. We're all in a heavenly race. And by the way, those that have went on before, your family that's went on before, they're up in the grandstands watching you run. Amen. 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 You say, you really believe that? Well, you'll believe it too if you read Romans chapter 12 or, yeah. and Hebrews. Yeah. Or Hebrews chapter 12, excuse me. First of all, there's a course on which we run. Uh, Romans 12, 1, just note this. You don't have to turn here. i got it quoted in my notes. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. See, this thing of being, it's talking about a race with lanes, but I don't know what your lane is. Mine so happened to be a preacher's lane. But I want you to know something. Running the race is just not for preachers. It's just not for deacons. It's just not for Sunday school teachers. It's just not for uh, uh, water workers. It's for everybody. We're all running the race. It's a personal race. Amen. We're so apt to jump on preachers if they make a mistake or they fail. Hello. I want you to know we're all in the race. And there's a finish line. And by the grace of God, we want to make that finish line. Then I, then I want you to go with me, will you, just quickly over to 1 Corinthians. And we'll jump back and forth from there for a moment. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Real quick, when you're there, say amen. Some of you beat me there. First Corinthians chapter number nine. When you're there, say amen. amen. Slow in here. This new Bible, it uh, it didn't want to turn all the time. First Corinthians chapter number nine and verse number twenty-five. When you're there, just shout out real good. Amen. Also, there is a crown in which we're reaching for. 
And I want you to look at it. The Bible says, every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we an incorruptible. Ladies and gentlemen, we're running after a crown, but it's not an earthly crown. It, it, it's a heavenly crown. Hey, by the way, Revelation talks about that crown. When we pass through the judgment seat of Christ, our reward will be crowns. And one of these days, my goal is this. I don't know if I'll get a crown. How many crowns? Well, whatever crowns I get, I want to take them. And I just want to throw them at his feet and say, Thou art worthy. To me, that's ultimate worship. To me, that's the most wonderful thing that happened in my life, that I finish well and I get a crown and I give it to him. And it's not corruptible, but it's incorruptible. I like that. It's a personal race. You might say, I'm a young person. You're in the race. You might say, well, I'm, a, I'm older. I'm a, I'm a joy classer. I'm a senior citizen. You're in the race. You've got a lane. By the way, we're close to the finish line. We're right, if you're over 70, you've done round the third. And I've seen a couple of you duck your head when I said 70. I mean, pew. Then secondly, I'm moving. I want you to notice this. Let's go back over to our text in Galatians. I want you to notice another word. Brother Jeff, it's a good word. Ye did uh, run well. By the way, that is a properly run race. The key word is you done well. You know what I'm looking for when I go to heaven and it's all over? This is my goal. Not necessarily the crowns, though I want to give them back to him. I want him to say one thing to me. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou been faithful over a few things, and the, I'll make you rule over me. There's some people will down you for your service. There's some people criticize you if you try anything for God. But I want you to know I'm not serving God for you. I'm serving God for him. I hope I can help you in my service, but I want you to know I'm not a man pleaser. I'm not a man server. I'm a Jesus server. And thank God one day, I just want him to say, Chad, well done. Amen. Amen. You did run well. That's good, isn't it? Turn, turn back over the 1 Corinthians 9 for a moment. In verse 26, if you're going to run well, there's three things involved. First of all, you've got to have a focused life. The Bible said, I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so fight I, not as one that's beating the, beating the air. I'm talking about a... a Focus life. I'm not, I'm not talking. You know, there's some of my Baptist friends. I might as well just, can I just go ahead and say this? Their whole, you know what they're, I know some Baptist preachers, and I'm criticizing them. I'm a Baptist preacher, so I can criticize them if I want to. You know what their whole lot life is? To make somebody mad and argue a point. And first one, I guess it's X now. I wish they'd have kept a Twitter. I, I, X kind of dry to me, but that's okay. I'm not, I don't do it, so. You listen to me. We ought to be bigger than that. I 
out a bunch of people. All they, got, all they want to do is fuss at somebody and complain at somebody. And, you know, the new trend is this. The IFB is bad. The IFB is bad. I even, they even get on there now and say we're a cult. Now, first of all, I want to tell that bunch of yay who's this. I might as well just preach it. Preach to them also. Number one, I've been preaching for 50 years. Until they start arguing about IFB and IFB this and IFB that, I never even thought myself of IFB. I'm just a Baptist. Now, I'm an independent Baptist because the Bible speaks of the autonomy of the church, but all this IFB and this, this, you know. And by the way, I, I didn't come from a mother church. This is an independent Baptist church, and there's not a church up north or a church in south that governs this church. We govern this church. Amen. And it kind of irritates me. Somebody want me to identify with somebody I don't even know. You see, you're letting it rip tonight, I thought it would. I want you to know that we need to be focused. A, a, a successful runner is a committed runner. Now, a good runner, he's got to have a, a proper diet. Now, I haven't a lot of people said what a glutton is. I can tell you, I could demonstrate it by telling you a few people on my staff that are gluttons. But I want all y'all to know they're not the largest people on staff. I got a couple skinny people can out eat anybody in this room. And they make me sick every time I go out to eat with them. And hey, by the way, they, your, your husband, he's as worst of all. i tell you what they eat. They'll eat a meat. Uh, they'll eat mac and cheese, mac and cheese, baked potato, and french fries. That's their diet. I'm sitting over here eating my little bit of lettuce, my dry baked potato, and my salmon. And look at it and put on weight. And yay, who's they eat all that and do nothing. But I want to tell you, I'm a, we need another kind of diet. I'll tell you what kind of diet we We need not to get off the Word of God. Now, this is our diet food. I, and I'm going to say it. I know I'm going to get, oh, boy, I'll probably get flogged tonight. But this King James Bible is the Word of God. It's our diet food. It's our Bible. It's, hey, it's, hey, don't get messed with me. This is God's Word. By the way, you got to have discipline. And then dedication. You just can't run the race just uh, flippantly. I can look back and I, every time I see the old brown boys coming to church, I, I think of their dad. He was one of the most faithful men I knew. He ran the race. Then I thought of another fella before I preached tonight. He died young. Name was Aubrey Grant. How many knew him? Some of you people that's new to the church, you didn't. The young man got cancer, melanoma. He lived for God even with cancer. God healed the cancer for 29 years. Cancer came back, but he didn't change Aubrey. He still lived for God. And when he died, he fought a good fight. And I remember a time, and I, you might say, why are you using him? There's so many went on before. Because I want to remember a time that I was over to his trailer over to Winfield. I was discouraged, Lord. So I was about as down low as I could get. I hadn't been here long. Fighting some fights. And I was ready to quit. Aubrey looked at me. And he quoted Nehemiah. He said, can a good man like you come down? I'll tell you what he done, his testimony, his Christian life, give me some faith, and I stayed with it. I did not quit Amen. because somebody else did not quit. Right. What I'm trying to tell you, if you quit, you may get somebody else to quit. Right. Good. 
Uh, I wish I could sing. I wish I could sing. I wish I could sing as my granddaughter even. Lois, you think you could give me lessons? And I didn't really like what she just done. She went. <laughs> but I tell you what, if I could sing, this is the song I would sing. Some people go to church on Sunday. They stand up and shout, then go to work on Monday and leave the Savior out. They think they've done their duty to the Lord. They have been true, but when they get to heaven, they'll find their one-day religion won't do. Amen. You've got to live your religion every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You've got to give your religion every day. Then the second verse I really like. Might kill the service tonight, but I like it. When you go to church on Sunday, when they pass the plate around, just dig deep in your pocket. Don't shake your head and frown. That, boy, that's a good song. <laughs> Don't turn your mini two bite over to look for a penny below. You will find your penny religion won't take you to the golden shore. I don't know. I, I don't know if that's a work song or not, but it's still pretty good. <laughs> I think we have to have a focused life. Amen. We ought to have a faithful life. That word run with patience speaks of endurance. I remember a boy, a guy had an old truck. I love old trucks. Bill Lamont sold me an old, I think it was a 51 model something. And he sold me one. And it probably reminds me that it was a junker. But this guy's particular fella had a truck and he put $3 worth of gas in it. And the guy asked him, why didn't you fill it up? He said, well, I didn't think it'd go far enough to fill up. Well, I tell you, it's like a lot of Christians. They're just not filled with the Holy Ghost of God, and they're not expecting to go the distance. Am I preaching? We need to be faithful. Uh, back to the Olympics. I don't know if you remember the 1968 Olympics in Mexico. That's where George Foreman won his gold medal. I believe that was the Olympics. And there was a man from Tanzania running the marathon. His name was John Stephen Aqua. And uh, the race was finished, Chad. And he came running. He came in. Uh, Ali came into the stadium bleeding where it fell multiple times, staggering all the way to the finish line. And here's what he said. He said, my country did not send me to Mexico just to start. They sent me to finish. And then I think we need to have a fruitful life. That's a properly run life. Holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain. That word vain means to be empty. By the way, I want to be fruitful. How about y'all? Well, but Jeff, what kind of fruit we want? I got, I got, I, I found some of fruit and vegetables. I think we first ought to plant five rows of peas. Somebody said, I don't like peas, but I, you said, what peas you mean? Preparedness, promptness, perseverance, politeness, and prayer. Then we need three rows of squash. We need to squash gossip, squash criticism, and squash indifference. Then five rows of lettuce. 
Let us be faithful. Let us be unselfish. Let us be loyal. Let us be true. Let us love one another. And boy, there ain't no garden worth anything if you don't have turnips. You need to tear it out or turn up for church. Turn up with a smile. And turn up with determination. That's a pretty good garden, wouldn't you say? There's some people, they never turn up to church. And Sunday night scares them to death, and Wednesday night is twilight zone to them. <laughs> then lastly, and I'm done. There's one thing you can't appreciate. I still preach short messages. A poorly run race. Look, look at the verse again in verse 7 of Galatians, and I'm done. I'm, I'm done. It said, ye, say the second word, church, everyone. Yes. Say it louder. Yes. What's that word imply? That you did, or you used to, but Jeff, you're not now. You did run well, but what did hinder you? Now, in this particular context, what hindered the Galatians was Judaizers who, who came back in and taught that they needed to go back teaching the law and grace. And they hindered them, and it tore the church up. Am I preaching? And by the way, I want you to know this is a grace church and we are not going back to Judaism. We do not preach works for salvation. We don't work for salvation, but we work because we're saved. Y'all all with me? A past testimony. You did run well. There's some people I know that never missed a service. Used to sing in the choir. Used to take, take church serious. They used to guard their purity. But sin crept in. They used to tithe, but now they tip. They used to be close to God. And they used to be a part of prayer. I, I want you all to know something. I'm going to say this from the bottom of my heart. Let's don't let these prayer rooms die. I know if you could get here at 5.30 on Sunday evening, it'd be good. If you can't, that's fine. I understand. But I want to tell you, don't let the prayer rooms die. Because that's where the power is. And then a present tragedy. Who did hinder you? Now, let me... Can I illustrate that? Chad, come up here. You're running the race. I'm not going to hurt you, okay? okay? You're too big to hurt, okay? I may hurt myself, but I want to illustrate what it means. Scoot over this way a little bit. I don't want to die. Here's what it means. <laughs> Having somebody to cut in front of you. That's what it means. They're holding you back, and they've got in front of you. That's good preaching, Amen. How many people in this room have let somebody cut in front of you Come on, preacher. and hinder you? They hurt you in church. They hurt you by their gossip. They hurt you because they wanted to spread rumors about you. That's shameful. They cut in front of you. They cut you off. And you know what you did? When you got cut off, you stopped. There's not a person in this room hadn't had somebody hinder you in the race. The devil plants people to hinder you. Amen, Roger? I believe they're preordained to hinder us. 
Hey, they like nothing else to hinder you, young preacher, and keep you from running your race and finishing. But you've got God as your caller. And the gifts of calling of God are without repentance. Am I all right? There'll be a lot of people that try to jump in front of you, move you out of the way. But you need to stay with it. Say amen. Can I? I got three minutes, and I think I can. I think I can read this in three minutes. There's a great poem called "The Race" from the book "Finishing Strong." Jeff, I want to finish strong. There's some people have been telling me, "Said preacher, you're preaching hard." I want to finish strong. I'm studying harder right now than I've ever studied in my life. I'll, I'll, can I give a confession? I'm, it's good for the soul, isn't it? This has been a busy week. I, it's been a week that's unusual. I, I did a lot of visit to myself because it's, we've been spread out. I've been on the phone constantly this week. And I'll tell you what, I never do this. But I got behind on my studies. I never do that. That's just not me. I'm study first and then... But I did, Lois. I just been busy, and uh, so I, I I came to the office and worked till about six last night, five five forty five. And then because I didn't know if I'm really ready for this tonight, I, I I didn't go home after lunch and have a Medicare nap like some of you. And uh, and I came to the office and I wanted to make sure I was on point tonight. And I was ready tonight. And I wanted to be determined. Because I don't want to quit. But I'll finish with this poem. And Lois, you go ahead to the pianist. Please. And I appreciate the song this morning. Here it is. Defeat? He lay there silently. A tear dropped from his eye. There's no sense running anymore. Three strikes. I'm out, why try? The will to rise had disappeared. All hope had fled away. So far behind, so error prone, closer all the way. I've lost, so what's the use, he thought. I'll live with my disgrace. But then he thought about his dad, who soon he, he'd have to face. Get up, an echo sounded low. Get up and take your place. Well, you were not meant for failure here, so get up and win the race. With borrowed will, get up, it said. You haven't lost at all. For winning is not more than this to rise each time you fall. So up he rose to win once more. And with a new commitment, he resolved that win or lose, at least he wouldn't quit. Y'all with me? So far behind the others now, the most he've ever been, Still, he gave it all he had and ran as though to win. Three times he'd fallen and stumbled. Three times he rose again. Too far behind to hope to win, he still ran the race to the end. They cheered the winning runner as he crossed first place. High, head high and proud and happy. No falling, no disgrace. But when the fallen youngster crossed the line last place, the crowd gave him a greater cheer for finishing the race. Even though he came in last with head bowed low, unproud, you would have thought he won the race 
to listen to the crowd. And to his dad, he said softly, I didn't do so well. To me, you won, the father said. You rose each time you fell. And now when things seem dark and hard and difficult to face, the memory of that little boy's helps me in my race. For all life is like a race with ups and downs and all, and all and all you have to do to win is rise each time you fall. Quit, give up, you're beaten. They still shout in my face. But another voice within me says, get up and win the race. I wish I, and I want to be transparent. I wish that I have lived, I would have lived a perfect Christian life. But that's impossible. I've had my ups and downs. There have been some times when we've all been knocked down. But I say to you, get up. You must finish even though you've been down. There might be some people in this room. You've run the race and you did well, but something's knocked you off and you're not as committed now. Not where you used to be with God. I say if you're not as close as you used to be with God, you ought to come around this altar and say, God, I want to get back close because I want to finish right. Stand with him. If you're here lost, you got to get in the race and get saved. But every Christian right now, you all just come. You, you say, preacher, I want to be a good Christian. I failed a few times. The devil told me that I wasn't of any good or any use. Hey, you listen to me. You're a use for this preacher. I love you. Don't, don't let defeat stop you. Keep going on for God. Our Father, I pray you touch this invitation. We love you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.